to reveal deep inequities that were around well before the storm, but also needed to be repaired. When almost 40% of children still live in Canada, you see. That's not a finished job. That's not a fair to put it. Our work won't be done when a typical black household works half work then part by white households in the city. The work should be done yet. That work will continue past its presidency, but Obama said he plans to come back once he's out of office so he can linger and enjoy the food and music that make the city one of a kind. Tamara Keith, NPR News. We are also tracking a major change in labor rules, which took effect yesterday. The judgment by the National Labor Relations Board has big implications for people who work for a company but are not formally employees. They are franchise operators or contract workers. The NLRB says when companies farm out the work, they may not farm out responsibility. They are still accountable for problems in the workplace. NPR's Yuki Noguchi reports. If you think about all the businesses that rely on contractors or franchisees, it's a huge segment of the economy. Everything from workers in warehouses, in janitorial operations, construction, and people who contract through home health care agencies. Yesterday's decision involved recycling firm Browning Ferris and its staffing contractor. Kathy Ruckel's house is general counsel for the National Employment Law Project, which advocates on behalf of workers. Any company that decides to contract out parts of its labor force is going to have to pay attention to this decision and make sure that they're jointly accountable for what's happening in their workplaces. Jointly accountable is the critical concept. It means complaints brought by workers against a contractor or franchisee are also brought against the parent company. Ruckel's House hopes that the decision will force companies to raise working standards across the board by weeding out firms that lowball bids on contracts. Sometimes those companies aren't able to comply with labor standards because their margins are too thin or they're too fly by night to be able to comply. The most significant impact is on unions which have long argued that fast food chains use franchise agreements to shield themselves from unionization efforts. Now, if parent companies are held responsible for the actions of their franchisees, big employers will be forced to negotiate national contracts if their workers decide to unionize. It is a big loss for the business community. Kelly Hastings is a lobbyist with the Society for Human Resource Management. We're disappointed that the standard has changed. Her group argued workers already had protections under the previous system and that this new decision will have the effect of requiring more businesses to bargain with labor groups, costing them both time and money. Roger King agrees. He's senior labor counsel for the HR Policy Association. It clearly 